Uh, okay, so we're recording. Um, yeah, so so the idea here is uh, we've got USD Liquidity Week starting next week, and uh, basically just brainstormed yesterday on some stuff that we could do to kick it off with a with a bang, right? Uh, so I'll I'll share. Um, actually, what's your what's your um, can you just text me your, your email here? I'm going to share with you a, a Google Doc that you can walk along with. Or you can just tell me what it is if you want. No, there you go. It's easier to use Slack. Ah, okay, good. There, you there we go. Okay. And I'm going to share this too, but just so that you have it. <coughs> um, there we go. Okay, so I'll share my screen. Everybody can see. Um, can you can you mute? Maybe I've got quite a bit of static on your side. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so here we go. Um, right. So so YouTube live stream event with Chris and Felix to kick off USD liquidity. Week and just just like unmute and jump in here if you have if you have any questions. But I'll just quickly walk through it, kind of give you the the, the flavor of it, right? Um, so you know this this would end up being titled. It basically, this all started from me thinking about doing you know my own version, like we've talked about, of how to buy Bitcoin with U.S. dollars using this, just like we've done with with uh, 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 rupees now and with euro. I was going to sort of do the canonical version of that. And then we'd have the script for it for everybody else. And then I just kind of went through this process of like kicking it up a notch uh, and, and doing something that, you know, I think is like idiomatically suited for a YouTube live stream and, and, and hopefully has the characteristics to go like relatively viral um, within our, our, uh, eco ecosystem, right? I'm optimistic. <laughs> I, I, I am. I'd, I'd actually like to try to do something a little bit ambitious here and just see what happens, right? See if we can do a little bit better than our norm. Um, and so, so figure something like 30 minutes uh, uh, to give ourselves plenty of time to do really a live demo of a complete uh, trade on BISC. And the goals would be, of course, to show people how to do it, right? So, so like assume that people have not seen BISC at all. Um, indeed, if this if this gets retweeted at all, this will be like people's first exposure to BISC. So it's got to like like actually, if I <laughs> this might be trying to get too much, but I'd actually want to send this to my mom, and she'd be able to walk through it too, right? But at the same time, we our core audience is the is the you know the the core Bitcoiners, the people who are really serious about security and privacy. Uh, these are who we want to see this and then retweet it, right? To get the sense like. Let's, hey, let's this is the never resource. forget. Let's never forget that on BISC you need to have bitcoins to buy bitcoins. So yeah, it's it's I'm, never going to be. Plus, you know, it's never going to be the easiest possible way to buy bitcoin. It's always going to be for people who actually care about security, privacy. Exactly, and and I actually intend, and you'll see this below in a moment. I intend to take responsibility for that fact in a first class way. Right. And like really not sort of hide that in any way, but actually make a point of that. Um, so in any case. Right. So the goals would be demonstrate how to do it. Right. It's USD liquidity week. So people know how to actually do it. Uh, inform inform users, both current and potential about, hey, we've got exciting new payment options. Right. Cash app, Venmo, top money. You know, we'll see which ones actually make it in by next week. But people need to know that. And that should be pretty exciting stuff. That's literally millions of people that we're exposing, at least potentially to. Um, okay, and then what I, what I have here in this next bullet point, create in-group excitement. That's what I, what I mean by in-group is like the people who are already you know, have a predilection to care about BISC, right? Get them excited. Get them thinking like, look, this is, this is the thing that I actually want to retweet. Like for the first time, you know, like I have deliver specific calls to action. I, I'm extremely conservative on, you know, I'm running our Twitter handle and stuff like that. I virtually never tell, you know, ask people to retweet anything. I, I, I don't like I tweet so infrequent, like, you know, I try to do something every day or so. But like, I'm extremely conservative about what I do. And one of the reasons for that is that, is that when, when I say something, I, I want it to matter, right? And if we put out a piece of content here, that we say like, hey, everybody, this is the one, retweet this. 
the couple of times that I've done that in the past, I've noticed people really do. People do, if I ask them to retweet, a whole bunch of people retweet. So like, I think we've crafted a certain degree of trust there with our, with our audience, you know, 10,000 plus now. Um, and I think if we uh, put something out that's really worth their attention, we, we could actually get quite a bit of engagement on it. Um, so yeah, so basically, actually give people those calls to actions, right? Whether it's uploading the video, that doesn't matter that much, but tweeting, retweeting the video itself and getting it in front of people um, could make a big difference. And I have these kind of outcomes uh, it is just spitballing, but based on what we usually do, just our kind of organic, if we put out a video, how many, how many views does it get? Uh, if we put out a, uh, a particularly interesting tweet or have some content that we tweet about, what sort of engagement do we usually get? If we, if we put something out there that got 200 plus retweets, 2000 plus views on YouTube, those would be like significant upstats if that happened within the first couple of days. Best we, best we ever get is like 100 plus retweets. Uh, we, we, I don't even know if we've ever got 100 plus retweets. 100 plus likes happens pretty frequently. But hmm. um, so, so just, you know, try, trying to see, what can we actually do here? T test the limits a little bit. Um, and I think, uh, again, all of this is open to, you know, subject to feedback, but my thought is do it basically, uh, you know, early afternoon or uh, sort of mid morning or whatever, Pacific time, Monday. Uh, don't do it this week, but actually do it next week. It's like a right now phenomenon. It's not, hey, next week is USD liquidity week. It's like, right now now's the time um so we could you know uh, uh create a little bit of anticipation european time on monday i agree hey, do it during, coming up do it during u.s time in u.s liquidity week so that mm -hmm. we see what's going on in the market in fact in fact even better if you give a bit of heads up about the live tweet get other traders to do stuff at the same time so you can see it live you know, mm. uh, someone can tweet or post on Slack or write a message. I just created my first order and you can see it there. I, and yes. you say, I just created my first order to sell Bitcoins uh, for whatever amount of dollars, 0 0.05 Bitcoins. Here's my first order. And you, people will be able to see it in the market and we will point it yes. out to the guy who just tweeted. And at the same time, we will be doing a demo, creating our own orders, but everything by. I, I love the idea. Yeah, so I just wrote create offers now, right? So, so as we're introducing BISC to people in the beginning of the video, um, we can have, you know, kind of spread stats in front, like, hey, here's how many, you know, USD offers there are now. Let's see how many there are by the time we're done with this video. If you know BISC and you're sitting here watching us live, put an offer in now, <laughs> right? And, and, and then put something exactly. in the troll box that says that you did even it. Even if right. it's a symbolic, tiny offer. So, so we could have, exactly. you know, by the end of the video, we want to have 10 offers on the offer book. Exactly. Because, because once you show that that is so easy to do, you know, people, people who really want to buy and sell, they want to see that there's other people in the market. And at the moment on BISC, you can't see who's really there because most people don't create offers. Most people start yeah. looking for a suitable offer to take it because you have to do a security deposit, because you have to pay a trading fee, uh, people would rather, you know, not take the risk. And the way to make them lose that fear is to show how easy it is to create an offer and also to show that there's other people watching ready to trade if the price is right. Yes, and that's why, that's why I think that uh, by giving ourselves, you know, 30 or 30 plus minutes, we just really don't have to be in a rush. We can actually do it really truly end to end you would play the seller, right? So, so you'd be the, the, the pro, you know, you would create the offer uh, and we'd see your screen while you're doing it. And so people can, you know, tangibly palpably see, hey, it's not that hard, right? Meanwhile, hopefully, you know, other people are taking the, 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 the call to action. They're also putting in offers and we can point that out as it happens, but they're seeing you walk through it. Boom, it's there. You flip over to my screen we see, hey, there's, there's the offer that Felix created. Now I want to take it. I'm, of course, playing the buyer, right? And now I'm really speaking to, to that audience, right? I'm speaking to, 
you know, like, like I actually want to address people in, in the beginning of, of, the, of the video somewhere where we're doing kind of the introductions. It's like this video is for all of my, my fellow Americans, right? you know, U.S. people, people with U.S. bank accounts, expats that still have access to U.S. bank accounts. This is for you. This is for us. I'm one of you, right? I live in Europe. But I have access to bank since, accounts. Since, right. finally, since we make it, uh, since we're going to make it a bit longer than just a tutorial video, because you know the tutorial video is a tutorial video, just five minutes, focus on one use case only. Uh, that's why we focused on the buy Bitcoin from this one for Euro, because it was the simplest possible way, right? It takes the least amount of sophistication. But since, and we didn't have time to explain everything, but I'd love on a longer video to be able to explain the privacy features. I don't think people have understood that BISC does not have access to your data. Uh, there is no BISC, basically. It's just a peer-to-peer -peer network, and your data is stored locally. It's also very important to explain the security deposit. We actually had a bit of a discussion on Slack this week. People are asking, so, hey, what happens since it takes time to settle the trade, uh, with people not pay, well, that's what the security deposit is for, for fraud prevention. And um, that's why, even though it sounds counterintuitive, using Bitcoin to buy Bitcoin makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, obviously, eventually, if, you know, if we could do micropayments and reuse the security deposit multiple times, it'd make everything even safer for everyone, but that, we're not there yet. Or atomic yes. or whatever. But um, yeah, we yes. can also explain the arbitration. Well, maybe that's... Well, and yeah, and I actually actually yeah. want to do uh, it, this. This all cascaded into a, a series of videos that I started to imagine, and, and arbitration was actually the, probably one of the very next in the series, where uh, I, where I would want to do it with three people, and the person that I thought of being the third, it could be you and me again, and we could have uh, J.W. Weatherman. I, I don't know if you interacted with him at all. Come in and be the third. Right, because uh, he's been involved, and you know he's he's a you know sort of has good presence on on, on these kind of uh, uh, mediums and channels, um, you know. But but just actually play all the roles. I would play the arbitrator. I am an arbitrator, right? You would have a dispute. You know, I'd be chatting between you and JW. We could do it again in a half hour, and you know, show people for the first time really what I consider to be the heart and soul of BISC is its arbitration. This is the human core, right? Uh, that, that that so few people relatively ever see but is totally well, fundamental to, to the success honest, of this thing. The fewer, the fewer that see it, the better, right? I mean, right. the idea is it's always there as a backup, but if you need arbitration for more than five yeah. trades, something is going wrong, right? So, I, I, I agree. The fewer the people who actually use it, the better. But the more people who, ex who see that it's there, Mm. will then turn into more people actually using it because it creates trust, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, plus, mm -hmm. plus, it's a good um, recruiting tool for when you need more arbitrators, and it's a good first explainer of what they actually do. So it's a training video, right? It's, uh, it's Exactly. And that's, and that's sort of, you know, we're, we're highly digressive here, but it's all good because I think we're really on the same page. The, the, that touches on another... Uh, angle of, you know, there's a bunch of birds that, uh, you know, I'm sort of envisioning killing with this video. One is, you know, definitely let's promote USD Liquidity Week. Two is let's show people how to, how to buy USD with BISC, which goes beyond USD Liquidity Week. Um, but three, and this is just sort of always in my mind, like literally with everything that I'm doing, is that really priority number one, as you know, is uh, recruiting, right? We have to grow this network. And I have this growing thesis, you know, this isn't like fully realized by any means, but, but you know, wh where's the greatest leverage? What's the, what's the order of operations to really like kill it with recruiting here? And I've come to believe that it's not in attempting to directly solve the problem of recruiting, right? You know, reaching out one-to-one, -one. you know, we have an A-list of people that we, that we try to uh, reach out to occasionally. And that's all like very, very ineffective. What's, what I think is much better is to uh, demonstrate the, 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 the power and effectiveness of the platform, right? It is growing, more people are using it, it is exciting. D just simply demonstrate that fact. You know, I try to do that on Twitter, you're doing that on Twitter. Two, make it even more exciting, right? 
which is what we're doing with growth efforts. Hey, I, uh, I love I love BISC because because of the exchange. But to be honest, long term, I'm really really interested in seeing how a DAO really works. Mm. That that for me yes. is an extremely exciting point of this. And, you know, if you can build a real working DAO, which which can be replicated, wow, well, that that can be so many other things. So you know that that's a very important reason for me to, to be interested in this project it, it, yeah and it's and, and it's it takes, not only because it makes the exchange even more decentralized even more resilient even more uncensorable but also because it's a model that you can use somewhere else yes exactly and that's and that's absolutely what's driving uh, manfred that's what's driving me right it's 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 i mean you know i, I love this too obviously manfred loves what he's built too but it's all about like actually workable business models for open source and so like like if we, exactly that if we can really build a DAO here wow right so so i think the more people that get turned on to that and that's what and that's what you're always hearing you know if you listen to these podcasts that i've done and so on I and mean, that's what all these podcasts are about so if, if somebody gives me a mic i just start talking about DAOs, right and eventually we start talking about trading with this right because that's the really truly deeply exciting thing um, there and, are uh, so many. There are so many things that, for me, are complete unknowns. So, the you know the inflation model, the monetary mm, model mm. The, of the BSQ tokens. There's so many different w choices that you have to make there, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of trial and error. The amount of votes, for example, that you have to take is there a limit to how much attention you can get from stakeholders. To yes. time on voting so you know if you if you say you do a vote once a month are you going to make people vote on a hundred different things are you or are you going to be able to delegate to the roles outsource it's bloody yes. there's many different things i mean for me the the first real working DAO is bitcoin yeah me too. Bitcoin has managed to keep it so simple i mean there's people working for bitcoin not just the miners there's people creating apps on top of Bitcoin. They're all, mm -hmm. they're all their own business models. They're all not, they're not, you know, their interaction with Bitcoin is almost as users, even if they're doing marketing for Bitcoin, even if they're doing many services for the Bitcoin DAO, most of it is self-driven, except for the miners. The miners, which are basically the beginning, because they're the first stakeholders, as well as the first uh, outsource la source of labor, their interaction was very simple. Mm. Do this hash, perform this function, compete in this competition, and here is your per block reward. Yes. Doing that for something a bit more complex, like an exchange. So at the moment, the only thing you have like that automatic is the arbitration payoff, uh, payout. Yes. So the, the, the more things, the more functions that you can turn into that, it's, it's really yeah. exciting because it really yeah. is basically the the yeah. less the less voting you can do the better right and bitcoin gets away with zero voting unless you count upgrading software as a vote right and if you, if you expand it to that then there's well, one kind is, of vote in right? bitcoin upgrading uh, software uh, it is a vote it's definitely a vote and it's but it's yeah but it's this de very different than than this model of voting that, that we mostly have and that's why like in, in you know in the phase zero document you know, my, my very first kind of like um, point in, um, uh, uh, you know, the principles section is uh, avoid contentious voting. And really what I mean is just avoid voting. Voting is terrible, right? <laughs> and, but like, as we have it so far, there's one kind of voting that has to happen. That's on compensation requests. And this really comes all the way back around to the whole point that I'm making about recruiting, which is that we want to surface how exciting what we're doing is. I am absolutely convinced that if people knew, if people had the same mental model that I have, the same mental model that you have about BISC, if that was widely distributed amongst the brightest minds, we would have a whole bunch of people wanting to get involved with BISC. It's just that that's a hard mental model to, tr to, to inject mm -hmm. into another mind, right? So the more we can surface this stuff, the more we can get people on board, the more bright minds that we have working with us, the more that we can actually solve these problems. Like, how do we avoid voting in the future? How do we avoid building yeah, but, contentious but let's governance forget, systems let's and stuff forget, like that? Let's not forget that this, you know, this, there's also the incentive side of it. So 
I've got some time on my hands. You're dedicating your life to this. But until the DAO goes live and people can at least take it as a part-time job because they have some, maybe not immediate, but some proximate idea of uh, monetary reward, you will get, you know, people love these wonderful imaginative ideas, the future is on, but they have to pay the rent. Uh, so, you know, you are not going to get everyone to do this pro bono. Eventually, you're going to have to have a business model, which, you know, so, so uh, yeah. half the people involved in the project are going to have to be earning the equivalent of a salary or the same in tokens. I, I, to I totally agree. And I, I don't, did you, did you see what I wrote in the compensation channel today by yeah. chance? Yeah. yeah. That, that bit about, you know, the, the, yeah. essentially what we're looking for right now is low time preference, high risk tolerance people that are all, I didn't write this, but are also highly competent people in the different domains we need. We need like, like you wrote, like 10 of those people, but like we have the whole planet, we need like 10 of those people to show up to get us over this finish line called exiting phase zero and going live with BSQ and having those incentive models. It can allow for a much larger group of people with higher time preferences and lower risk tolerances to participate in, in a variety of ways, right? So, so I think, I, I think that those 10 people get compensated enough uh, in the long term that they can afford to make an investment now, they yeah. can become kind of contractors and outsource the easier task, right? So say the idea is um, a, a person creates a team and he has his team do a bunch of stuff and the team, he pays the team out in, in dollars or in whatever they, or in Bitcoin or whatever they want. And he can even, you know, find that team on freelancer or any yes. other job boards, but he, he's doing it for the project, obviously, but also for his uh, BSQ tokens, which That's are right. stake in BISC. Yeah, and I mean, you, you've, you're actually the closest thing to, a, to an example of that having happened, right? Because you essentially took a delegative approach to getting these first couple of videos done. Um, yeah. I mean, it that, again, it's just an, it was a very, I mean, it's, a, it's a proto example, but, but I think it is really important that we emphasize, and we haven't emphasized it yet, it just hasn't been appropriate, that this needs to be a highly delegative model, right? Uh, the number of people who are willing to deal with BSQ and so on, we don't know how much that's going to be, but wh whoever they are, we want them to have as much freedom as possible to realize as, 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 as large a, you know, outsized set of results as possible. And that, of course, means hiring other people. Maybe they pay them cash, whatever, right? It doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is that results get produced. So, um, yeah, so let's just try yeah, to wind just, it just back. To, just to make clear to yeah. anyone who's, uh, who's the listener, I mean, this is all on GitHub, but uh, Chris is referring to uh, the Rupees video, which mm. I outsourced to a freelancer. Uh, I mean, I'm not completely happy with the result of the experiment because I uh, took more time than I expected to train and to explain and so on. But, but it, the result was reasonable. We came out with a workable video. Yeah. This could probably be made much more efficient and we could churn it out like, like you know, one every day or whatever uh so it can be done i don't know if videos are the most appropriate thing to use this for but, but i can imagine that um, these bounties if if bisc can come up with a regular number of things that it needs break them up into tasks which can be individual bounties that there's you know it's hard for someone to reach bisc just to do one bounty but if you find someone who's watching the bounties and mm. farming them out, I mean, that, that's the idea behind it. I, I honestly don't know if it's possible, but if it is, it could be so efficient. You get someone who's actually interested in BISC enough to be watching all the bounties and helping create them and whatever, and then farming a bunch of them out to subcontractors and then claiming the reward as well as paying them in cash. Yeah, it could work, maybe, we don't know. We, we'll have to do yeah. more. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, so with regard to like, you know, this particular thing that we're talking about a video next week, uh, I just, I, I want the context to be that big, right? That, like as big as we just made it, which is, it's like, this is the kind of content that aside from its ostensible goals, right? Of like kicking off liquidity week and so on, 
is it, is it, it, what's in the background? What's in the atmosphere while we're doing this is like, Hey, everybody pay attention to what's getting built here. Right. And the people walk away, even if it's sort of implicit, just the, 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 the buzz of it, the sense of it, right. It's like, this is actually what we're doing. <laughs> and it just happens step by step, you know, one liquidity week at a time, one feature, one payment method at a time. It's all very practical, but, but we never want to be myopic and sort of lose sense of, uh, what, what we're actually trying to do. And, and, and just, you know, quickly on that, it's like, um, to, to my, my highest aspiration with this is that, is that we see BISC become, uh, or, or one way or another, BISC contributes to or directly becomes a global uh, open protocol for exchange transactions between crypto and fiat, right? This is not some provincial little thing that we're building here, right? Hey, uh, Chris, let me be honest. I've, I've, uh, in Europe, in the US, there's plenty of big players who will allow you to buy and sell Bitcoin. Sure, they're not decentralized, but you know, it's not a big deal. One, there's options. Uh, at my previous jobs uh, and in general as a philosophy, if you can't build something that is going to work in China, in India, in Africa, you know, this, you're not adding a lot of value. If, yeah. I, I've, I've got a friend in Ghana right now. Um, it's a bit too early, but I've already mentioned it to him a few times. But if, if we could bootstrap, and Ghana is small, maybe we have to try China, we have to try India first. But, you know, my, my goal, my eventual goal a year from now is for him to be able to bootstrap a Bitcoin to Ghana, Ghanaian SEDIs in on BISC. If that can work, I'd be so happy. Yes. Uh, and as you know, I'm also trying out some things in China. If we can get uh, Chinese Yuan, which, by the way, is a wide open market because all the centralized exchanges have been kicked out of China and they all went to Hong Kong and now they're being having restrictions and posting that. So, so that is a tough challenge. I know the technical side is complicated. I know the legal side is complicated. But if it can be done, it just shows off the potential of a DAO. It shows off the potential of a P2P platform. Uh, you know, it would blow everyone's mind. And we don't need to blow everyone's mind before it's working. Just show it, get it working, even for tiny volumes, and then show it. Look, Hey, what nobody else could do. This has been done. Yes, yes, totally agree. So, um, so basically, you know, we can iterate on this uh, afterward, after this call. We don't have to do it all here, but, but uh, you know, a quick sketch of the kind of script that I that I have in mind is, uh, you know, this is this in italics here. It's just for context again, because if this does actually sort of get some traction, this will probably be the first thing that people have ever seen around this. You know, if we get you know, 2,000, 3,000 views, a whole bunch of those views are going to be people who have never heard of it before. They just saw it in their, in their Twitter feed or whatever. So, so basically don't, don't step over anything. Don't fall into, you know, knowledge traps. Um, but, but give a, give a tight, you know, overview up front, uh, that, that set, you know, again, we, we sort of keep it practical. I'm not going to like, I've, I've spilled a lot of ink and I've said a lot of things about, you know, what this is and why it exists and what it's for. I don't intend to like go through that in total detail, but, uh, but, but give the, give the, the short version of that, uh, it I think can take a form of, of basically like, you know, Hey, here's who I am. Here's who you are. You know, give some introductions, right. Uh, uh, it, it, say what this is, but, but it, 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 by way of explaining, here's what you're going to need, right. To, to actually trade, to buy Bitcoin with US dollars using BISC, here's what you're gonna need, right? You're gonna need A, to download BISC. Okay, for people are already getting it, their heads are already getting shifted around. Download something, right? They don't think about it that way. And we're showing them the downloads page, right? Oh, I'm sharing phone, my screen while- Download it on my phone, you mean? <laughs> you download on your desktop, your laptop, right? Yes, that, that thing, right? So people's heads are getting shifted around just by saying that show, don't tell, right? Show them the website, show them the link. Okay. They get it. It's an app they see the app. 
So that's number one. You're going to need to download BISC. Two, and this is crazy, stay with me, you're going to need a little bit of Bitcoin, right? In order to trade on BISC, you actually have to have a little bit of Bitcoin. Even if what you want to do is buy your first Bitcoin, you still have to have a little bit of Bitcoin. Why? Okay, and then again, in the tersest but yet friendly way possible, explain why that is. And then give people actionable stuff, right? You know, like whether it's uh, friends or family members, right? Whoever you heard about this video from, whatever it is, right? What you need is 0 0.01 Bitcoin. That's about a hundred bucks worth of Bitcoin. And there's, you know, these are, these are different ways that you can get it. I know that seems crazy, but there's a really, really good reason for this. And we try to, you know, split the difference of explaining why that is and not try and digress too much. So I can like actually craft a communication there. Um, and then three, in order to effectively trade, you know, to buy Bitcoin with US dollars using BISC, the third thing you're gonna need is a sense of what BISC is trying to do here, a sense of why BISC exists, right? What is the mission of this thing? And like, I never want to step over this because it's all just pure pain for people if they don't understand you have, you the mission. Slide, right? You had a slide in your presentation, which I don't know where you gave it, but I mm -hmm. saw uh, which basically showed uh, in very clear terms the headlines of Bitcoin exchanges mm. shut down yeah. or crashing. You showed Mt. Gox, you showed the Chinese exchanges, you showed all of that. That explains the security side and the not being a custodial exchange side very clearly. And yeah. I, would, I would go even deeper there. So like if you list the number of Bitcoin exchanges that have been hacked, disappeared, done a, a run away with the money, it's every, every month there's a new one. I mean, last month we had two, right? Coincheck mm -hmm. and the other one. Every single month there's several of them. Uh, yeah. And that's one side. And on the privacy side, I mean, you had a slide with the Equifax, Equifax and uh, mm -hmm. the Yahoo hack. And uh, yeah, people see this in the headlines all the time. They, and BISC takes this into account and fights against that. And this is why you need the security deposit. And this is why you don't need to download the app and run your node on the network. So you're fully independent and you don't have to trust anyone, not even BISC. And this is why you, you don't even have to deposit funds in your BISC wallet, which you control, by the way. So on your app, on your wallet, you control 100% the private keys and the wallet. But even then, you don't actually need to deposit any money there. You can keep it on your phone in a different wallet. And only when you're funding the trade, you have to move it there. So, yeah, we, we, it, I can see how we can spend too much time explaining that. But yeah. yeah. But, but that's exactly it, right? Try, try to find the balance of really powerfully delivering those facts. So people have enough context to say like, oh, this is well worth my time. The extra, what hassle of having to acquire some Bitcoin beforehand or hassle of having to download. Well, that's really worth it, isn't it, right? So at least, at least don't step over trying to, to make that clear. Um, and then, and then it's, it's in, right? It's okay, so let's do this, right? Let's do a live trade and we're toggling our screens back and forth. And uh, it, you're creating uh, an offer to sell, and then I'm going to come in, be the buyer. I'm going to take that offer, and I'm going to buy your Bitcoin. And uh, and I think we can do it over Cash App. I mean, I'm uh, totally open to what payment method we use. I, I have a few options, but I think I have Revolut. I, I don't have Revolut. I could possibly get it. Um, the uh, I'll tell you why I think about cash app one is uh is it I, i'm just set up with it already and i like i did a little testing the other day i know i i can uh, initiate a payment there um two is i think it would be reasonably easy to set to set you up with an account even though it's sort of faux it would be like a second account that actually talks oh. to a bank or whatever but but i think it would be easy enough to set it up uh and three and this is where it's like kind of a open question for me is like there's uh, there's just some sort of, uh, I don't know if opportunistic is the right word, but it's like, you know, hey, they just made news with Bitcoin. They're obviously Bitcoin friendly, I, at least with their messaging. And, you know, yeah, like, they're not going to block, they're not gonna block uh, cash out being used as a payment. For well, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's, that, I guess that's a well, little bit Revolut of a test. Revolut is also it? making news with Bitcoin. In fact, mm -hmm. I have, uh, you know, we don't need to do one. If we get into a group, we could do three trades. We could do one with Revolut, one with Hubhold, and one with uh, Cash App. 
that might that might blow our timeline. I mean, it might it might take end up taking quite a while. No, no, really, we can do them all at once, right? I suppose. Create I suppose. few orders, wait for the blockchain confirmation, make three payments, and then that would be that. Uh, that that would be interesting, right? It, it would it would really help people uh, My, get you, what's going on when we yeah. mean by payment method, right? And it but would also you do like you do everything three times, right? And yeah. that way. You know, you, you're anyway, I don't know. But my only issue with these payment methods mm -hmm. is that they have a small number of users. And you really want to kick off liquidity with the widest possible. I mean, let's be clear there's two big payment networks in the world banks with bank wires and debit and credit cards. Mm -hmm. We can't with which are have the widest possible worldwide network of payments. We obviously can't play with credit and debit cards uh, because of the chargeback issues and because it's all centralized. Uh, we can somewhat play with um, wires, at least in Europe. The probability of chargeback with SEPA is low enough that the risk is very much minimized. Um, yeah. But what? But but you don't want to. You know, unless it's you can you can create a market with something that's minority niche and have only has only a few million users. But to be honest, because liquidity is so important and because we're really bootstrapping it, you want to use something in the U.S. that you know a hundred million people have. That's PayPal, right? Yeah. That's one hundred and sixty-five million. I think maybe that we have to find a way to mitigate risk. With PayPal, so that well, I think, and I'll I'll repeat this. I think you, I think I saw you react to my comments here in in in, in uh, Slack, but I'll I'll just recap this for the benefit of anybody watching. I think that what we've now like uh, designed, what Manfred's in the middle of implementing, with these um, what what we what we have current what we have so far regarded as too high risk to be integrated into BISC at all. Payment methods, things like PayPal, we never supported it. It's just trivial to, 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 to cause a charge back there. Um, it, it, scams proliferate all over the internet with this. We know PayPal would be a disaster and so on. That's why we never supported it. It's by that same token that we've never supported Cash App, Venmo, you know, all, all of these other um, sort of uh, uh, third party payment providers that uh, at the end of the day uh, can and will and do claw back uh, uh, funds transferred, you know. Yeah, so no, but the thing is, how can this scammer do a sustained attack? Because let, let's put an example, an easy restriction that will deter scammers massively. A maximum trade limit is really low. Say you have a maximum trade limit, which is $100. And a scammer to steal $1,000 has to do 10 fraud, fraudulent um, trades. Right. And he's going to be asked, he's going to be doing 10 chargebacks. He's going to get his account frozen straight away. And the other guys are going to win the arbitration case. And that's yes. for $1,000. So obviously, if you allow people to, to do a $1,000 trade, well, that might be worth the risk of burning a PayPal account or of stealing a PayPal account to get $1,000 and then run away. Uh, by the way, I'm almost running out of time. But if you, if we only need to test anyway, and uh, the Bitcoin fees are low right now. If you can do, I don't know, $10 trades and you don't get a single case of fraud in a few months, yes. then you can do $20 trades, $100 trades. And, then yes. and, and, and that's actually exactly the, the point that I'm making. So I'll try to wrap this up since you don't have much time. Uh, is that through a combination of exactly that, right? Re really, re what we're actually now introducing is what we call a high risk category of payment methods. Yeah, I saw so high risk. That those those will have low limits, like in the couple of hundreds uh, sort sort of area to start with. So that's protection number one that addresses exactly what you're talking about. And the second thing is uh, we'll now have a kind of two phase process for for releasing the funds. One is uh, that the buyer has to pay. So if it's cash app, they have to pay within 24 hours. The the seller has to receive you know acknowledge receipt of payment from the buyer within 24 hours because mm -hmm. cash app kind of settles instantly at least within cash app. But then the seller is going to be admonished by BISC to first immediately cash out of Cash App, take those funds out of Cash App and put them into the backing bank straight away, yeah. right? And 
wait for that to settle, which takes two to three days. When you see it show up in your backing bank account, then release the funds, then click payment received. Mm -hmm. So people are going to have a two, three, four day experience with cash app, but we're taking a conservative approach that I'm not going to say guarantees, but yeah, radically yeah. After decreases months, the chance. After a few months, you don't get a single case of fraud. Yeah. Then, you know, well, we can maybe take away the, the final settlement thing and, you know, you can, you can trust a cash app payment. Exactly. Exactly. And we can, and we can but, re but again, re relax back, bit sorry, by bit. Back to, the, yeah. to the, my main problem with all this stuff, small number of uses. Uh, you, so what, what is there apart from PayPal? Well, in the future, you're going to have Facebook payments and Google wallet payments all over the US and all over the UK. Facebook is something that has hundreds of millions of users. Maybe not, not that many users are actually using Facebook payments, but now, but we can't wait. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But I, th but, but I think, I think really, I think it's well aligned, right? That we use things like cash app, uh, it's, it's certainly Venmo. I mean, Venmo has a lot of users, but Cash App to me feels just right because you know it's an it's it's been around for a while, but it's sort of up and coming. It's really trying to make a splash in Bitcoin. I think yeah. there's a kind of like Ven overlap of like you know people who are potentially bis interested, bis curious, and sort of Cash App users. Yeah. Well, um, on the other hand, and, you trust Cash App to keep your funds. You can actually buy Bitcoin on Cash App. Well, right. And that's, and that's the other reason that I find it kind of an interesting opportunity to, to use Cash App and po possibly a controversial one is, is, is comparing and contrasting, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's wonderful that they're exposing their users to this. That's great. But look, it's still the wrong way, right? You're still doing it wrong if you're, if you're keeping your private keys with Square, right? So, so sort of showing people the right way to do it is just an interesting opportunity. But, you know, we don't want to step on their toes too much or whatever. We'll see. But my point to your point is that I think in this bootstrapping phase, if we're focusing on yeah a, a relatively small demographic of like cash app users, those are basically sort of with it, millennials, hipsters, forward leaning people, whatever. It's like it's not it's not the masses, you know but we're not ready for the masses anyway yet, yeah. right? So if we have success with Cash App, if we have success with Venmo, Pop Money, et cetera, and we see this kind of, this, this approach that I just described working out, maybe we can really like, oh my gosh, actually do PayPal, right? And then, okay, okay one Facebook, question. whatever. Right. Yeah. One, one final question. Um, w when exactly are we gonna know which payment methods are included and when are they going to be integrated because some some people who offered to participate in the U.S. Liquidity Week uh, yeah. might not have Cash App, might not have Seller, and you know will want a couple of days to install it and try it and test it and fund it. Yeah, well, I know uh, Manfred's original plan uh, or, or or hope anyway was to release today. Uh, we're not going to make that in any case. It, it just, he's he's just sick, right? He's just been yeah. sick, and the poor and the poor, the poor guy's been sick for weeks. Um, so he's he's resting up. Let's see, but tomorrow, Friday, my hope is that we can get a, a release out with at least a couple of these. And I think we just got to go with what we get. Um, and, and I think we'll get at least a couple of those in there. I'm really hoping for pop money. Pop money looks actually really promising. I think if we get pop money and cash app, that, that could be a, a good uh, combo because um, you can basically plug them into any bank. Cool. Um, I really have to go. Um, yes. Okay. But uh, but basically, if you're up for it on for the for this proposal for the call, and uh, I'll help out any way I can. Okay. Awesome. All right. Thanks. See Talk you. to you soon. Bye bye.